Fight fans, thank you once again for coming through. Much appreciated. Remember, please hit that subscribe button if you guys are new to the channel. Kel Brook fights in, what, three weeks' time. And I think it's almost been forgotten. I think with all the Amir Khan coming back, Andy Joshua versus Joseph Parker, Dylan White versus Lucas Brown, and even that nonsense we had with British Beef, Akoli versus Chamberlain, I think Kel Brook's been forgotten. And... It's strange. Everyone talks about the boxing career as a short one. It is a short one because I remember when um, Kelbrook was one of Eddie Hearn's first signings when he took over Matchroom or so when he um, brought Matchroom back into the boxing world. I I'm sure it was Darren Bark, and then I think the second signing could have been Kel Brook. So Kelbrook was going to be that superstar, right? That one that was going to take over the world and maybe dominate the 147 pound division once the likes of Manny Paco and Floyd Mayweather retired. And I think, and this is not down to his own fault, I think he's just been mismanaged and mispromoted so badly he could sue Matchroom. It's been disgusting. I remember watching Kelbrook fight for the British title. I can't remember who he fought. He fought, I think he travelled to Scotland. I can't remember who he fought off the top of my head. Travelled to Scotland, won the British title. And I remember thinking there and then, we have a talent. We have a talent and he got the nickname Special K. And I thought, you know what? That there's something special about him. You kind of felt like he was on this wave, where, you know, coming from the Ingle gym, all that history with Johnny Nelson and Prince Nassim Mohammed and the Spice Boys. And I thought, okay, there's something special here. Um, and then, as they do with English talent, you fight for a European, you fight for a Commonwealth, and you stay on that European, you fight fringe world, fringe, fringe, fringe. You never go straight into world. And there's a guy that's doing it right now called Bradley Ski, but we'll talk about him another time. And then Kelbrook finally went to world level and beat Sean Porter. And I remember thinking, lift off. Lift off. Sean Porter was on a good run, just smashed Devin Alexander, looked quite big, quite strong, quite formidable. And Kelbrook beat him. And I think he beat him by a couple of rounds. It was a fantastic performance. Then what do you do after that? If you're Kelbrook, that's it, right? You've opened the doors to arguably the richest division in boxing. That's the division you want to be in. He fought Jojo Dan, he fought Frankie Gavin, and he fought Kevin Beezer. Now, again, I'll say this right now. If I'm Kel Brook, I'm looking to speak to my lawyer and sue Matram. If that's what you give me after beating Sean Porter, then you must be crazy. You must be crazy. And then what do you do? All right, so I've, you know, I've, I've beat Kevin Beezer. I'm struggling for a fight. Give me anyone. The only name that Eddie Hearn constantly links to him is Amir Khan. And he's been linking Amir Khan to him for three or four years. Well, Amir Khan's just got on with his career and fought some very, very good fighters in the United States of America. Kel Brook's been having these dud fights in Sheffield Arena against people that we just do not care about. So, okay, look, so fair enough. Okay, you know, after um, Kevin Beza, your manager gets on the phone and your manager says, we we've got a fight. Um, it's against Gennady Golovkin. What? Yeah, yeah, you, you, yeah. You, you, it's the only fight we could make right now. It makes you some money, but it's against the guy that nobody wants to fight. From one sixty upwards, from one sixty eight, we heard about him beating up Kovalev and sparring. That's the guy you're giving me. I weigh one hundred and forty seven pounds, and you're giving me Gennady Golovkin. Yeah, go on. Why don't you just fuck my career up? Why don't you? So look, a lot of people have blamed, blamed Kel Brook for taking a fight. Fighters are fighters. Um, we don't know how that mentality works, but I feel like fighters will fight anyone. They just they just have that mentality. They will fight anybody. And if I'm Kel Brook and the last two people you give me are Kevin Beza and Frankie Gavin, then you know what? Just give me a fight. That fight should never, ever have been offered to Kel Brook. It should have been on the table. That is promotional malpractice. You're putting him in there with a killer. And lo and behold, he got bust up. He got beat up, he got a broken orbital bone, and his career from there went down and went down big time. And then obviously you put him up against Errol Spence, and he got beat up again. Kelbrook's in a very, very tricky place right now, because Kelbrook's doing something that I don't think he should do, and that's fight 154 pounds. Kelbrook should not be at 154. Did you guys not see the size of Jarrett Hurd when he did a face-to-face -face with Lara? This guy is a... This guy, this guy must be boiling down from something from like 220. He is massive. That's what awaits Kel Brook. That is what awaits Kel Brook. Lara awaits Kel Brook. Jamel Charlo awaits Kel Brook. Even the likes of Julian Williams awaits Kel Brook. There's so many guys out there. Lubin 
awaits Kell Brook. You know what, this, this is the thing about Kell Brook. Kell Brook at 147 was a monster. And it reminds me a bit of the Martin Murray syndrome. You know when Martin Murray was at 160 and everyone thought, oh my God, you're such a big 160. Martin Murray went up to 168 and was like, oh my God, you're quite small for 168. That's Kell Brook. Kell Brook, yes, he struggles at 147, but believe you me, he is tiny. And I say this again, tiny at 154. Those guys are too big and too strong. Will he beat Rabchenko? Of course he'll beat Rabchenko, but it isn't about what he does now. It's about what he does in his next two or three fights. And he has to be managed and marketed so well, promoted so well. Let's be honest, the only fight out there for him really in terms of a world champion type fight is Saddam Ali. That's the one. But that doesn't make no money. It gives him a belt. But at Kell Brook's time, it's not about belts. It's about money. And unfortunately, we're going to go there again. The only guy for him really is Amir Khan. So both of these guys need to win, which I think they will. And then they have to meet next year or, in, or December this year. It's the only money fight out there for both of them. But if I'm Kell Brook and I get to the age of 50 and I'm with my grandkids, I'm looking at my record. I'm looking at the way I've been managed. I'm thinking I could have been something special. And I don't mean it as a pun. I could have been something really good because there is no way I should only have one legit name on my record. And that's Sean Porter. Why, why, why have I not got the likes of the Andre Bertos? And, and the Devin Alexanders and the Louis Colazzo. It's just to make my record look a lot better. That's what you do when you look at Khan's record. Win or lose, you look at Khan's record. And Khan's record says Danny Garcia, Lamont Peterson, Devin Alexandra, Louis Colazzo. It says those guys are in and around. Those guys that we all know. Unfortunately for Kelbrook, the record only says one name on it. And you're talking 36 fights in. Sorry, 38 fights in. 31 years of age. I'm sorry, but Kelbrook has been managed so badly. It's a disgrace. It's a disgrace. And um, if I'm Kelbrook, look, I'm never going to leave Eddie Hearn. It's too late to do that right now. But I need to say, look, I need to, I need to be over in America. I need to be mixing it in with those guys. I don't need for him to give me or feed me crap that no one cares about in Sheffield. Get your ass over to America. Fight some guys. Look, Eddie Hearn's supposed to be one of the richest promoters in the world right now. Sorry, Matchroom is supposed to be one of the richest promoters in the world right now. Bring over some names. Bring over some guys I can bash up that are names. Why are you feeding me the Beezers and the Gavins and the Jojo Dans and the Roblevs and Sinchenkos and Carson Jones and, and, and Saldivia and Matthew Hatton? Are you taking the piss? Come on. But guys, what do you think? I'm ranting here for now. Kelbrook, um... Uh, Rabchenko, um, leave your thoughts below. Let me know what you think. Who wins? What round? And is am I right? Is it promotional malpractice? Let me know. Peace.